Hello guys and welcome to the 20th episode of The Gold Room with Iyabo Ojo. Okay, so today is a special day. Well, every day is a special day. Every every episode is a special episode, but today, today is a unique one. I have a brother from another mother, a friend, a musician, a son of a legend, someone we all love, and we call Baba 70. Hello. Oh, yes, <laughs> I'm good now. Nice. Yes. everything? It's fine, fine, fine. <laughs> it's been a minute, and hmm, guessing this man here today, I had to feel for more. <laughs> he's a liar. No, he's, he's what she called me. I was on tour. I said, I'm not around. So when you get back, I should call me again when I go back, and I'm here. <laughs> Don't, uh, don't spoil my bad name, Yabo. Your bad name or your good name? <laughs> or in between? <laughs> so, how have you been? Fine, fine. You know, uh, I just finished working on my new record and this week has been he hectic, you know, so uh, yeah. Yeah. So, when is your album coming out? Uh, I think first quarter, some point first quarter next year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm about to release my... Um, Actually, it's my fifth album now, so interesting. So this album is it going to talk about your issue with the police. I don't know. I don't know. It, it, it depends. If my issue is still in court, no, I won't say anything. If not, yeah, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> so how has it been like? Because I mean, I can remember the first time I met you. It was a very long time ago, and that was at the beach. Your dad was still alive, and they were playing, you know. And then you came on his brother's son. He was so proud of you, and you were blowing the. Is it the saxophonist at the bar beach? I think that was the last beach performance he had then. Yeah, lucky, lucky yeah. sunsplash. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, I was time. there. Wow. I went with my dad because my dad used to be a big fan of your dad. Yeah, that was a long time. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I remember in Lekki now, Lekki Beach. Yes, yes. Lekki Beach doesn't saying. exist anymore. I, yeah, it doesn't. I remember it's Shewere, Shewere, Shewere. I was like, <laughs> uh, no, that's my brother. So that's my brother's tune. <laughs> uh, yeah. Lekki shows used to be wild. Oh my God. <laughs> Memories. So, how's it been like being, I mean, a son to a legend? Because your you dad know, is a legend. When my dad was alive, you know, my father was a very humble guy in terms of his lifestyle, mm. you know. So, I didn't even know my dad was famous until I started going to school. Mm. And people be like, oh, you have a last son. And they are all surprised. Mm. And me, I was wondering, like, yeah, why, why are you surprised? Because at home, my dad did not carry himself like he was famous or anything. Mm. It was kind of normal, very simple. So, it was when I started, like, interacting with the world independently, I began to understand, like, okay, my dad is famous. Oh, he is. But at the same time, that was, to me, that was not what made him special in any way. Okay. You know, he already proved himself valuable in many ways in my life that his fame had nothing to do with our relationship or how, how I viewed him. Yeah. Um, and also, I've been in son of my life, you know. Mm, For I me, know. it's nothing special. Yeah. You know, to us, it might it's for be, people outside yeah. looking in. Yes. But all my life, that's that's the only identity I've known. You know, I grew up with him till he died, and we are very close as well. So, for me, it's just you know, it's part of who I am. It's part of my identity. But then there's a responsibility to it also. Mm -hmm. That when there's a legacy in your family, you, whether you like it or not, all your actions tend to be a reflection on on the legacy of your family. Yeah. So, and to be honest, if we don't live in this kind of world where we have special people, every family has its own legacy and everybody involved um, as a member of every family yeah. should respect the legacy of your family, no matter how uh, big or small, even yeah. if it's not prominent, yeah. you know, you should respect because it should be prominent to you. to you, even though the whole world doesn't celebrate it, to you, it should be something, something worthy, special. you know, so I understood that responsibility as well. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's a responsibility that... You know, I happily welcome. So music, I mean, did you just know you were going to become a musician or your dad informed that or, I mean... Okay, well, I've answered this question many times in my life, but not, okay. in, not a lot, not a lot. Nobody really asked me this question in Nigeria, but on tour. Yeah. I've answered it so much that I've said, when people ask me, I just go and check my order in time. Okay. <laughs> but I'll answer you because a lot of people in Nigeria don't ask the question. Okay. Because many people think, oh... She just plays music because his father, father his is fella. a musician, yeah. 
first of all, my dad did not tell us what to do. It, it wasn't his time. He didn't like to impose his own views or his own um, ideology. Well, ideology yeah. comes to because he basically he didn't want to. He didn't want to in, in, ref, reflect or project his own energy, energy. on us. We are allowed from a very young age to make our own decisions. That's why even as I'm grown like this, I think one of the strongest points of my existence is the decisions I make. Mm. I'm so well versed mm. in making decisions and paying for the consequence. Mm. From when I was a kid, my dad never really allowed us to do anything that was because they said so. Mm. You know, we it had to, to say be what you wanted yeah, to do. To you had the freedom extent. to choose. Even school wasn't imposed. Like, if we didn't want to go to school... Yeah, my family too. We just yeah. say, listen, I don't want to go to school. I, you, know, you see that yeah, nobody's going to make you go <laughs> if you don't want to go. You know, and it's not going to diminish the relationship. Like, yeah. you're not suddenly a bad child because of that or anything. Okay. So, you know, growing up with my dad, we used to have a brother. I used to have a younger brother. Half okay. brother, you know. Um, only brother Femi and sister are alive now. And our late sister saw that from the same mom. The, the, Three of us that are left are from different moms. Okay. But there was a fourth son. Uh, and one day, my dad went to the shrine, came back. We used to, they used to leave us at home. They go for their show. And then my brother, the my half-brother died and okay. as a baby. So and okay. apparently, I was a child. My sister and I got really sick when we went to it. So after that, my dad used to just take us everywhere. Like, so he didn't used to leave us there. Even when we were in school and he was going on tour, he would pull us out of school and we'd travel. You know, and I started seeing the world from a very young age. Mm -hmm. So, and I was immersed in my dad's music, you know. So one day I just went to him because I watched the show he did at the Apollo. Funny enough, I played the same venue 30 years later in New York this April. You know, I went and I said, you know what, man? I want to play music. Mm -hmm. He said, can you sing? I said, yes, I can sing, you know, so... I sang a song for him. I was like, okay, cool. When we get to Lagos, he started rehearsing with the band. I chose music because, you know, I just saw my dad sitting down, Doing money it. everywhere, women everywhere. I'm like, ah, <laughs> this is the best job. <laughs> so it like, was for the money and the, and the women. <laughs> yes, I was eight. You know, was what did I know? <laughs> I was eight. I'm allowed to yeah. think the world is all about that. It's when <laughs> grown-ups think the world is all about that that is a problem. Yeah. You know, so I said, man, this is what I want to do, man. <laughs> so that's how I joined the band. And this is my 32nd year in the Egypt 80. Wow. That I've been playing with the band, wow, you know, so. 32nd. 32. Ooh. Yeah, I'm 40 now, so yeah. since I was eight. Yeah. So since then, I've just been in the band, playing, honing my skills. The only time I left the band, I went to school. When I finished, I came back, yeah. released my first album. And, uh, and you have no regrets? No, 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 nothing. Maybe because I didn't play football. But at the same time, it was still my decision not to play. Because my uncle told me, he was like, listen, with football, after 35, your career is over. What are you going to yeah. do with the rest of your life? Sure. You know? And it's such a sound advice because when I see sportsmen now, what do they do when they're uh, doing, working for a gambling company, doing adverts? <laughs> they can't really do You're throwing shades, though. It's not, no, it's, it's not nobody was. Uh, Pele, before he died, he was doing Viagra adverts. I mean, come on. But with music, you know, you can like play it. But well, they make like a lot that. of money in football, though. As I said, ask any of those footballers that you return all, they should return all that money for mm. two hours on the pitch, like they used to be as young men. Mm. They will return it for that two hours. Because it's our passion, you know, and mm. that's the only downside of sports. Sports, you make everything early, but it, except maybe you go into coaching. But how many so clubs can you coach? choose to go mm. into investment. But it's not hands-on. I'm telling you, passionate people that love what they do. Mm. Like, for example, they tell you you can't act anymore. What do you do? Mm. You, you see yourself, there'll be a day that I'll you can't act. Woman. But <laughs> would you not miss the fact that you can't act anymore? Yeah, I will. Definitely. So... If you're passionate about what you do, you know, you, you really you want get to do it forever. forever. It, it is, so that's why you find out very good footballers end up being coaches and still want to be hands-on, part of what is yeah. going on. But there are so many coaching. That's what my uncle actually told me, that mm. there are so mo there's only so much coaching jobs available. You know, I was yeah. like, okay, I think music is the way. At least I can play forever, you yeah. know. So that's probably the only regret. But at the same time, it's not a regret because, say, hey, I can play music forever, but I can't play football. So if you weren't a musician, you would have been a footballer. Easy. 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 That, that was easy. <laughs> so, but you play, you play ball for fun. Not anymore, you see? <laughs> I started the good thing I went to play music. 
Jesus. Three years ago, I hurt my right knee okay. so bad, and now I can't play again. If you I play football play. for two hours, <laughs> my knee is killing me. Like, I can't sleep for two days. You know, so you see, that's how I've hurt my knee, and my career would have just been over. Well, you know, no more work, just go to your house. With it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but the good thing about music also is that even though they break my leg, I can even yeah, go with my your, crutches. Your crutches I go and perform. <laughs> You're right. It's true, true. So I know, I know, like, you took after your dad because you loved, like you said, the money, the women, but you ended up marrying one woman. Mm-hmm. No, but that's eight years old now. Mm-hmm. That was something that you said that I was eight. <laughs> so, Can you, old, you know, what I've said at eight, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, know, it doesn't matter. As I grew up, if music did not mean more to me than those things I thought of when I was eight, mm-hmm. and also you have to be understand, I was really also influenced by my dad's music. I was mm-hmm. impressed by his music and also as a musician, the more I grew as a musician and studied music and immersed myself in the theories of music, the more I understood what my dad did with his music and the more of a genius yeah. I saw that he was. Yeah. Because Fela is the kind of musician you even appreciate more yeah. when you're a musician. Yeah. You know, Yes, as a music lover, you can like him, but it's like classical music too. Mm. If you're a musician and you, and you listen, yeah. knowing what music is, you would really appreciate it even more than people that just listen for the fun of it. So I was, I, there was also that, for sure. And that is what has actually brought me to where I am in music today. Not uh, the infant, infantile dreams and ambition of an eight-year-old. Yeah. No, but the informed decisions of an adult, young man in my 20s. As I said, even having discussions with my uncle. Because my dad died when I was 14, mm. you know? Uh, and I started I started being successful really early in life to mm. a certain extent, mm. you know, started coming into money, mm. you know, so I've always been someone that had uh, the right people advising me advising. on what steps to take in life, yeah. you know, and for me, that's one of the luckiest things, yeah. you know, and the career I ended up, the way I ended up in my music career yeah. is because it's not by fluke or oh just earned it because of my father so no mm-hmm. it has been really deliberate you know and you have to understand that i also have an elder brother that played music yeah so i'm not the last only child that played music yeah you know to come after my elder brother and still be able to make a name for myself and come mm-hmm. in this for myself and that's you both are still playing music very deliberately yeah. yeah because that's how people know it's not because of our dad yeah. you know, my dad is my brother is 60 mm-hmm. you know I'm 40. Maddie is behind us now too. He is. Yeah, he's doing good. <laughs> and he's in his 20s, you know. Yeah. And he's actually the best of all of us, you know. And you see, that's that's what it that's, means because yeah. it continues to progress because we're really dedicated to it. Yeah. Not just because, I mean, nobody says Fela is a musician because his father was a musician. Mm-hmm. Nobody knows that Fela's father. I just father. found that few weeks ago my grandfather was a musician too. yes he recorded albums he wrote I think he was the first hymns. person that recorded a song that was my great grandfather that was your great grandfather you see oh my god exactly. so you guys so, come from that lineage of music if I, yeah. <laughs> we even have a brother that is in australia that didn't grow up with the family that didn't even know he was a kuti until he was 50. in his music too no he's not a musician but he's a creative art director okay i mean it is what so we the, are. The thing is we are creative family. people. Yeah. I mean, so when people say those things, it's because, you know, they're just being clever by half. <laughs> so, like, when I think about your father, I see him like, I see your father is an evangelist because in his words, he he spoke a lot of, you know, he will, words he, that, he will prefer the chief priest. The chief priest. Okay, let me, use, let me use the word <laughs> chief priest. Yes. So he was more a chief priest. But to you, like what, when you look at your dad or try to remember your dad, what's that one thing about Fela that you look back and you'd be like, oh, I would always remember my dad for this? Uh, for being my friend and my dad first, you know, that's the greatest mm-hmm. thing that, that's like the greatest gift he gave me, you know. So he was more of a friend than a dad or was it both? I think he was more of a friend than Fela. You know how to be a dad. Mm. You know, in the it sense wasn't strict. of the word, it was, just, it was very strict. Oh, really? My father, fella, you know, the thing is that fella was very strict, but fella didn't have many rules. Okay, okay, my dad too. For example, <laughs> from when I was, my dad wasn't even strict at all. From when I could go out to my friends, okay. I didn't have bedtime, so there was no rule like, oh, mom, I said my mom, my mom enforced the bedtime, mm-hmm. but if I snuck my way to my dad's side of the house, 
You Nobody can come and enforce bed time day. I just did it, be there, my dad. Nobody can see anything. <laughs> but like I said, it's 4 a.m. By the time we were 10, we could go out at 6 in the morning, whatever. So there was not a lot of rules that my dad enforced. No, he believed that nature should also nurture the child. The child. But he had certain rules that he thought was important in our own grounding. Yeah. And those rules he enforced. Like, he didn't like us lying. I wasn't allowed to fight my sister. My sister could fight me. <laughs> That's I, think, me. I never understood That's that law. So <laughs> you know, but as I grew up, my, I understood that. Was, my son never forgave me for that. Yeah. Every time. He's I, think like, I understood that you, it was grounding you that understanding that, that you, know, you protect your sister. Yes. You are stronger. Yes, that's it. That's this is not where you use your strength. Yes. You know, go and fight outside. Go and fight your men outside. You know? <laughs> so I understood that. I understood. And it has helped me as a, as a grown man being able to, yeah. you know. Vestos is like, mom, every time you say, don't beat her, don't beat her. He's very stubborn. <laughs> I said, she's your sister. You don't have to beat her. You have to fight for her. Stand by her. Yeah, it's true. You know? yeah. <laughs> and so, those rules, yeah, first. But other than that, it was a real supportive dad. And he gave me the self-confidence to face life. Yeah. You know, in my in the foundations of my upbringing. Yeah. I've been very lucky to have the dad that I have and the mom that I had. Uh, you know, so, yeah. All right, so I want to go to um, you talking a lot about politics, trying to... I know you're always very passionate about it, your own ideas, the ways in which you see things. Reason is totally different. And most times I'm on your life watching what you're saying or probably aftermath going back on your videos and listening to you. And some I understand. So I want to ask you this funny question. Like, if you were given a year to rule Nigeria... Like, what are the things you think you would do right? I mean, I don't like doing ifs, but okay. I'll, I'll indulge you. Yeah, okay. because I always say, if my mother was a man, okay. she would have been my father. Okay. But she's a woman, so okay. she's my mother. Okay. What are we but doing you plan on being our president tomorrow. You know, like, <laughs> and I have a friend called Ifto. Ifto <laughs> is from Kutakos. <laughs> okay. I don't like, just use, all Nigerians know, if to say... say. <laughs> I don't think that if to say, say he's a lie. He's a lie. If to say you come, that means you didn't come. <laughs> that, that means you didn't come. You know? But I mean, what, okay, what do you think are the things that should be done right now? Yeah, exactly. Now, if, if, Let me put I it that way. I love that. Yes. You know, uh, the issue that Nigeria has always had mm. uh, since the coup of 1966, really, mm. is that um, we have the people have been detached from the resources of their nation. Hmm. So instead of us as Nigerians, all benefiting from the common wealth. Hmm. See, now don't get me wrong. Everybody says things she won't hate people that have money. She won't hate the big, big men. No. Uh, the big men that concern me in Nigeria so are those ones that corner the thing that I for everybody as if it's their own. Hmm. And nobody can question it. For me, what has to be done in this country is that there has to be a change in the relationship between the government, the elites, their political and business, mm. and the people, and our resources. There has to be a total transformation of that relationship, first and foremost. Mm. That the resources of Nigeria cannot benefit any individual persons or family, mm. except the collective. If you want to be Bill Gates, go and invent Microsoft. Mm. You know, if you want to be Elon Musk, go and build Tesla. Mm. Don't come and be selling the oil that our ancestors put in the ground for all of us as if you're the Lord. And so mm, that's exactly. the first thing that the, 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 these billions that are in personal pockets mm. can be used to restore the dignity that have been taken away from African people for over a hundred years. Yeah. And the fact that these people are even willing to sit on these billions and not use it to develop the country that they say it is their country that gave them all those billions in the first place yeah. shows that there's a complete disconnect between who they think they are and who they really are. Mm. So we as Africans must find a way to grapple that which is our own off their hands and use it for ourselves. In the first year, like for example, this whole subsidy removal thing. Why is subsidy so so bad in Nigeria? Why is it only Nigeria that subsidy is suddenly wrong? In fact, this subsidy is the only thing the Nigerian government does for the Nigerian people. Mm. And we, they have convinced us to say that it is bad. How is it bad? It's not bad, it is corrupt. Who are the people corrupting it? Very few Nigerians, not up to 1,000 Nigerians. The right approach is to punish those 1,000 Nigerians, mm. make, uh, use them to set an example for the rest of Nigerians to see how this country is going to move forward from now. You know, 
because definitely the problem with the subsidy is not the actual subsidy that they have to pay, mm. but the corruption, the fraud on it. People saying they deliver oil, they did not deliver. What, what was I the uh, the one who did that? No. Am I the culprit? No. no. Why am I paying the price for that? And why are the people that have done that not even okay, even remove the subsidy? But say, okay, fine, we're still going to investigate and punish those that ruin the subsidy, ruin the subsidy regime. Mm. I would understand that. But to just say, oh, Nigerians, take the hardship, more hardship on your head. Uh, the people that have stolen, continue enjoying your life and your money. You know, it, mm, is, it shows a clear disconnect between the people of this country and, and that which is ours. That which is ours. Any government that is serious about developing this country must be willing to restore to Africans that which is theirs. Mm. That's your job from day one. Nothing more, nothing less. Any other thing is playing to the gallery. Mm. And they know, why they play to the gallery though, is that they know that as soon as they do that, all the Nigerian professionals in Lekki, mm. don't, they don't know that contract is coming, contract is coming. <laughs> Everybody supports whatever they say. It's Everybody the truth. Yeah. The truth. <laughs> okay, so I, I like that. I, I didn't even think of it that way because initially when they were talking about removing subsidy, Nigeria is owing a lot of money. We can't even afford that right now. And they need to take it out. I was like... Well, subsidy is back. It's back as we speak. They paid subsidy last month. Oh. And they're going to pay subsidy this month. Because if not, petrol will not be... Because they've tied it to international market. Say they remove subsidy. As dollar is falling, okay. fuel, as dollar is rising, fuel should, must be rising. rising. So if they didn't pay subsidy last month, we would have been paying 900 Wow. So subsidy is back as we speak. So why was it removed in the first place? Ah. Okay. Because the people that the people that commit the fraud are still free. That's why, mm. you know, it's back. We have a lot, a lot to do in this country to repair this country. Well, God will help us. <laughs> no, we have to be. We have to help ourselves. Yeah. I mean, but we are used to saying God will help us because yeah. you know Africans we are very. We don't want to do anything. If no, we want to do something, I don't think we don't want to. We do won't it. say God will help like us. We don't have the power to oh, do anything. But we do. But we do. We do. We do. We don't have so much power. The few of us that try to want to speak out gets. So. Uh, you know, the thing is this also. <laughs> now, let me tell you something. As Africans, eh, that's what. We have to be made to live out of our minds mm -hmm. as African people yeah. for this system to function. We must be out of our minds. Because the moment any African just sits down for 10 minutes mm -hmm. and actually stays in his mind and thinks about his situation. There's no way he would accept what is going on. Mm -hmm. But because they make sure through distraction and everything that you're out of your mind all, all the time. Yeah. You know, we as Africans don't know our story. We forget that this system we are all bowing to and praising because we can enjoy some little luxuries that they throw away, mm -hmm. never invited any African into any part of it peacefully. Yeah. For an African to go to school, somebody had to die. And we are the only group. That's why I, mean, I don't see myself as any other group in this world. When people are talking, like even this Israel-Palestinian war that they are fighting, I, say, I can't pick side. Is it the Arab that love me? When I know what they are doing to us in Tunisia, doing to us in Morocco, in Libya, or is it the Jews uh, of Israel that uh, were the only country that supported South Africa during apartheid mm -hmm. as they were killing other black people? In fact, I'm surprised that so many Nigerians love Israel, the land of God. That trains is all the SAS officers in Nigeria that you don't like. It's Israel that, sorry, it's Israel that they go and get their training to come and met out beating on you in Africa. Teach them how to deal racy, you know, put the racy spirit in the black person that come and deal with you. You know, we as Africans pay the blood price to be to enter the bus, somebody died. To be a lawyer, somebody died. To be a doctor, somebody died. To go to uh uh, what was it called? To go and vote, mm. somebody died. To be voted for, somebody died. Whatever step we have taken, as soon of sacrifice, yeah. we are not thought of that those sacrifices that are made for us. Mm. We forget that the door was this ladder. It's not even the door, really. There was a wall around us, mm. and we have a ladder to people with their blood and bones. Mm build this ladder for us to climb out. Now, some few Africans climb this ladder, get to the top of the place. Instead of 
using their energies to build more ladders, bringing more Africans up. They pull the ladder up and throw it to the side. I said, okay, stay down there and listen to what we are saying. <laughs> <laughs> you know, which is not the way it should be. There's not, there, there's not better people than us. Yeah. I mean, if Nkrumah did not do what he did, there's no way to ever can even sit here and have this conversation. Africans don't know what colonialism was. We don't know what our ancestors, how they lived. We don't know that slavery, a colonization means slavery in your own land. That everything that happened to all those slaves mm. was happening to us here. The whipping, the beating, the humanization. Yeah. There were certain people that stopped it. And it is still not over. It and for us not. to think that we are too afraid or anything to finish the job for the future generations so that the next generation of Africans that come don't exist under this kind of situation is our only reason to be here. We have no other reason to exist at this period that we're using our talent to free ourselves. And only our talents can do it. Mm. Nobody's going to come from outside to do it for us. Mm. The talents of Africa are the only thing that can free Africa. Now, if the talents of Africa are too afraid or feel that uh, their talents is only to make money for themselves, then there's no way that African people will ever restore that which was taken. No way. If I, our doctors don't think their talents are for healing their nation or to make money, yeah. Africans will continue to be sick. If we, if the lawyers and the judges don't think that their talent is to bring justice to the African people, yeah. then we'll forever live in injustice. If we think that all these talents that we are bestowed with by the ancestors is for our personal gains, mm. our children will be the ones to pay the price. And they will hate us for it because they will know that we knew these things were happening. I just want, like for me, I, I would say that I think we enslaving ourselves is even worse than what they did to us in Africa, because you know after we after we gained independence that they say we gained, I don't think we still have that independence as far as I'm concerned, because a lot of our mineral resources that are supposed to be used to better our society, our environment, mm -hmm. our people are being um, taken away, given back to them. And because of the greed... Cheap. Taken away cheap. Very cheap. One because car is uh, $50,000. Yeah. One barrel of crude oil is $10. But yeah. without the oil, the car cannot move. Do you understand? I don't so understand I this, feel Max. our leaders, they still are putting us still in that same situation. But it's more painful because it's our own doing this uh, to it us. It is not our own because, you know... Okay. So how do you... John Henry Clark, which is one of my greatest teachers, mm. he said, not all skin folk are kin folk. Mm. So it is not because somebody is black that they are African people. In fact, Africa is full of Europeans and Arabs. Yeah, Very but Nigerians, few, but we're all Nigerians. Yeah, we are all Europeans and Arabs. Really? I mean, <laughs> yes. We are, we are very few Africans here. I mm. mean, how many people are proudly African, worship African religion, you know, portray their African worldview, uh, believe in Africa more than Mech. But I used to say to my friends mm. that when Buhari was president, mm. if they had told Buhari that a nuclear weapon mm. is coming from America, mm. it has gone rogue, they can't control it. Mm -hmm. And this nuclear this nuclear bomb mm -hmm. must drop on one of two places, Lagos, Nigeria, or Mecca, Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. Where do you think Buhari will choose? Buhari, they won't even ask the king of Saudi Arabia. <laughs> they will ask our own president. Buhari, choose where this bomb will land. Where do you think he was going to choose? Oh, do you think he's going to choose Mecca? Never. Exactly. Not even no Christian president will choose Jerusalem. Because this is not there. Or Vatican. Eh? Bomb eh? Jesus, 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 Jesus. <laughs> so... Oh, there are few Africans existing in Africa. So do you think religion is one of the reasons why we behave the way or be behave? Of course. Reasons why they behave the way they behave? We have to also understand that we are also ruled by the descendants of slave traders and their agents. Hmm. That's one thing we don't really understand. Because that's I say, we are so detached from our own story. I get that. At least ninety percent of the people ruling this country yeah. are directly descended from slave traders. Mm. Four hundred years ago, three hundred years ago, two hundred years, their parents were the people that used to steal black people to mm. sell to Europeans for money. Mm. There, there was no money that time. It was it was 
uh, 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 gin, mm. gunpowder, mm. or whatever European. This, in fact, these were the Africans that have always been mesmerized mm. by European things. That felt that owning European things was just as important as wasting African lives. Mm. So, the, in the days of their father, they used to the things that they like was gin. Today, champagne and Rolls Royce, mm. but it's still the same things. That's why you can look at every billionaire on the African continent. These people cannot do anything with their money but buy. Mm. What kind of billionaire cannot build his nation, build his community? Mm. What kind of billionaire doesn't want a legacy? Mm. What kind of billionaire is like, you give a 20-year-old white boy a billion dollars, he wants to rule the world. Look at what Mark Zuckerberg is trying to do. Look at what Elon Musk is trying to do. Elites compete at the top. That's mm. what it means to be a true elite. You compete at the top. There will be at least four of them making cars. That my car is the best car. <laughs> Not my Rolls Royce I went to buy is the latest Rolls Royce. I mean, these are children. I say these are children because they've not grown. These were the children of Africa. Their parents were the children of, our, uh, of Africa in the time of our parents. And they are the children of Africa in our time mm. that cannot have true ambition, a grown-up dream. It's the same thing they were thinking when they were in high school. That's how they think till they die. Like I told you when I was eight, oh, look at money, mm. look at women. Eh, I want to play music. So these people, it's the same thing they liked in high school. I want to be men. I want to beat house. I want to buy a car. I want to buy clothes. At 16, they turn 50. Still there, what do you want to do? I want to buy clothes. I want to sleep with women. I want to. That's what they are, chasing all the small girls in town, corrupting our society. Because when young boys can no longer engage with, their, with young women in society, just because of irresponsible older people are corrupting the minds of young women with money and things that young boys cannot afford. You take yourself from your 40, 50, 60 years age, you delve directly, you know, you're not even sleeping with one, you have like 10. <laughs> you know, it becomes... No, I'm telling you... So you're you, just wasting the resources that you're supposed are, to use to build the society. And damaging the fabric of society at the same time. Every street, hotel, nightclub, hotel, nightclub, no library, no youth center, no community centers, hotel, nightclub. Then you have complained that young people are only taking drugs and going to club. What else have you given them to do? What else? Are they the ones that are supposed to build the things that will engage them? No. Society, meaning business and political elites, mm. are supposed to be the ones that invest in the things that will engage the positive side of the youth. Like I was misquoted when I was talking about Big Brother. I said, if there's a Big Brother in Nigeria, all well and good. But the elites of Nigeria, all young people of Nigeria, a balance. Mm. There will be Big Brother, then there will be another one that is more educational, more positive, more about nation building. If you look at America, not be, did we invent Big Brother? Mm -hmm. We learned it, you know, we watched it, okay, they do it, we started doing it. Mm -hmm. But why didn't we learn the other ones that they do there? That they used to uplift their youths in the sciences. Imagine if you're in Nigeria today and you're a talented nuclear physicist. Where's the program? You, you'll be an area boy on the streets mm. or carrying a bag for one alaye. Mm. If you are a talented rocket scientist, where's the space yeah, program? Yeah, they should have shows for talent. Not even shows, like a real program. Like yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's like the national program for it, like America yeah. has NASA, National Space Institute. Yeah. We should have our own that is engaging these talented people know that we'll be praising our uh, the robotics engineer of Apple is a Nigerian. I'll be looking at them like this, as if Apple is a Nigerian company. What has that got to do with us? Mm -hmm. We are sitting down here just like slavery, that our best minds are being taken to Europe and America to serve the interests of people that don't even care about us. You know? So for me, these are the things that are really pertinent that we as Africans. It's not the fact that our people are doing it to us. These people, until Africans realize that these people are not us. Mm. They look like us. They have our skin color. They stay in our country, but mm. they are not us. Mm. These are the Africans that have submitted their souls to the Europeans and the Arabs. Nothing about Africa. They don't care about African people. They don't care about the African continent. So if we say we care about ourselves and our mm. continent, we must understand that we must take power from them and build it without them. Take our things that are with them. That, okay, this is what we don't give and I don't do. Bring them more. They can build school, hospital, roads, and the things that we need instead of everybody shaking after them, knowing fully well that they have nothing to offer. Mm. You go hard, though. Because Nigeria, Nigeria is so corrupt. Taking it from them is... <laughs> 
It's going to be blood. <laughs> well, I don't know about blood. You know. the is, but the thing also is that blood is being shed in Nigeria. We are not trying to take it from them. But blood is still being wasted every day. I know. I know. And that's even very sad at the end of the day. I know. But you've, you've made some in points Jetacon, In Jetacon, trailer, one trailer, three days ago, exploded in uh, Ijora in Papa. Yeah. How I many people roasted in that inferno on the road? Yeah. A road they refused to fix. That they said they are fixing for how many years? They've not moved for Trailer, like, boo ah. I mean, all our roads idea. are even bad. The ones they've said they've done, they love portals everywhere. Every time they close Tomila Bridge and open it, it's worse. Yes. <laughs> I've never seen We are closing the bridge for three three months to repair it. My time is up on and they open it, it's worse. It's still the same. So we just don't understand what's going on. But hopefully, hopefully, like we say, God will help us get it. You know, what is going on is that we are ruled by descendants of slave traders mm. and their agents. This is what we are ruled by. And until we see them for who they are and treat them as such, you know, we will just be going around in circles in terms of true national development, mm. you know, that will be meaningful. That yeah. will give me a you peace, peace in our homes. Because we know? do need it. That will have a phone number to call it. I'm not by outside your house. If you know be big man, we know police personally. What number do we call for the police to come? <laughs> when people tell me that we need police in Nigeria is there to protect Nigerians, <laughs> I always ask them, so how do you call police in your own house? You must have a personal no, because I, 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 I wonder if the police is protecting me. How do I call? <laughs> who, who do you how do you call? It's the, you are just talking like a big man that you are not. You know, because only big men are police protecting Nigeria. And that's true. We don't have, like, one number to call. You must have, like, there's a lot of numbers. They have a lot of police numbers. Not My like sister, if they pick it, if they don't, what if they pick it? That's uh, not pick. We just, see, we, and it's not the fault of the police neither. Yeah. They can't, they are no magic shots. They can. It has to be paid for. Yeah. I found out that sometimes they buy their uniforms. Themselves. It has to be they paid for. The person that should pay for it uh, is in one party now spraying the money. And people are healing him. That's, that's the problem. Right there. You know? And when I was growing up, you know why this thing is kind of annoying to me, really? When I was growing up, I was stigmatized for being fellas' son. I couldn't even enter my girlfriend's father's house. Mm. People in the street would be like, see, fella picking, fella picking. <laughs> and my father didn't do anything. No. Now, these killers, murderers, corrupt thieves that their actions are killing millions of Nigerians every day, you are willing to be in party with them, healing them, chairman. So I don't understand because I know you have it in you to stigmatize because mm. I'm a victim mm. of many levels of this stigma. Mm. You know, so no, it is like, you should check, maybe we need to check ourselves. Once you speak the truth in this country that we are, you automatically become a bad person. You know? Silence is what they like. That's why they keep shouting, silence is golden, silence is golden. But, you know, we're going to keep, well, the few of us that believe in change and believe in the truth and want a better Nigeria, we're going to keep speaking out in our own little way. And maybe we'll sure. one day our voice will be heard and a lot of people will be able to summon courage to do the needful. But You're right. God. All right. That's just it. To do the it might never be in our time, you know. It might not be in our time. The definitely. great, the great, the greatness of the of the African liberation story is the, its inability to be to be killed. Mm. So, as I said, so many great men and women, greater than you and I, mm. have given their lives. Mm. You, know, you guys are worshiping Jesus. That you know, you were going to wake up in three days. Mm. These people, I'm telling you. They went to die, knowing fully where they are not going to wake up. And they still went to die. Mm. Just so that you and I can do what we are doing today. Mm. You understand? So, this story cannot be killed. Mm. And as long as every generation has so somebody to move this story forward, mm. our victory is assured. Because yeah. one generation will be serious enough to be like, you know what, listen, mm. what, what's going on? Let's face this task at hand squarely. Yeah. You know? And it's, it's truly within us. Mm. One of the tricks that have been played on our consciousness as African people that we've been made to feel like Africa is not worth it. Mm, it is, actually. But it's true, it is, but we, we don't think Africa is worth it. That doing something for the sake of Africa is not... Mm -mm. We must be paid. We must be this. Mm. That's why Africans are not even united. Because yeah. to unite, we must... Love yeah, we. I think it's the mindset. They believe you can't want to fight a battle without wanting something in return. 
you can't speak your truth without wanting something in the trunk. And that, that's one thing that I find very funny right now with most of our young ones that they've allowed a lot of things to set into the religion is one of the things they use. Tribalism is another thing they use. When you speak out, is either you're cloud chasing or they've paid you money or you just, you know, you're doing it for because you hate someone. Like someone asked me one day, well, yeah, but why do you have a problem with APC? Why do you hate them? Like, I don't hate APC. I have a lot of friends in APC. I have a lot of friends in PDP. I have a lot of friends in different political parties. I just have a choice. Everybody has a choice. My choice might not be the right one to you, which is fine. Everybody has their choice. Like, I went with Peter B. I've never seen Peter B before, one-on-one. -on -one. I've never spoken to him before. You understand? One-on-one. -on -one. I've never been to any meeting. But I just believed in him. Somebody can see, like, you believed in... Was it Sean Ure? Everybody has. But that does not mean you hate Peter B. Or that does not mean you hate anybody in APC or PDP. But you know, the way Nigerians are so wired is like once you don't support a particular person that they look up to or they support, mm, but you know why? they feel like you hate You know why it's like that? It's because we are generally... Okay. Let me put this in a nice, mild way so that your viewers don't think I'm being rude to everybody in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. We, the professionals of Nigeria, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the people see us as the... Sorry. Excuse me, as the errand boys of the elites. Mm. Because really, what is thriving in Nigeria is the service industry. You know, the service industry is what really employs majority of people that makes ends meet for majority. I mean, even bank managers mm. have to be running tailor hustle on the side, mm. event planner. Mm. You know, many doctors have even abandoned doctor degree. Ah, like me, I do plenty of jobs, plenty of business to stay alive. <laughs> so, I now, it. Who, what kind of clients, if you're in the service industry that gobs up at least 60%, 70% of our people here, mm. what kind of clients do you need to make it? Is it poor people or rich people? Everybody wants the rich people. How do the rich people know that you exist? Through the celebs, the influencers. Mm. So there's already this marriage and this dance mm. that me, I don't even really have anything against. My own issue with the Nigerian professional class is our complete alignment with the mm. oppressor. Just complete submission. You know, we completely alienate the poor, our own people, mm. that we are from. Because mm. no, 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 how many of us are born for VI? Mm. How many of us are born for Ikoyi and Banana Island? Mm. We all either move to these places or just come and work here. Mm. But because we are not class conscious, we come and work for them and we just suddenly think, oh, we are, we are among them. But one day we'll be like them. Mm. Instead of us to understand that, no, our allegiance should be with the people. So there's this distrust, and I'll tell you why it exists. Because all the poor people know that it is the bank workers that are laundering money. Mm. It is the laundry money that is spoiling their life. Mm. All the poor people know that the lecturers that are taking money for bribe. Mm. I mean, look at this dean in Calabar, a whole dean of law mm. that is protecting the justice of that of the young people that should be protecting their rights. Mm. Law, mm. the last protection of the common law, mm. dean of law, taking blue job from mm. young girls, forcing them or it mm. fails them. Yeah. Poor people see that. They know that the professions of Nigeria are untrustworthy. Mm. And we can now suddenly demand trust from them without showing them the effort mm. that we have changed. I am part of this story. I will not say it oh, because she won't tell one line, no. I am part of us. That's why I talk to us. Mm. I listen, our duty is not to shake after this man. Temporarily, it might look viable. But trust me, there's greatness for us. We should build bridges to our people instead. Mm. I mean, in Nigeria, two years ago, for nine months, universities were on strike. Yes, yeah, so. sir. Sure. Our children didn't go to school, but we were going to work every day for the nine months. Mm. I repeat. Our children couldn't go to school. We went to work every day. No strike, no protest, no even for our children. Who did this to us? We will stay at home and pregnant women are dying in Nigerian hospitals for 3,000 naira medication. We go to work the next day. 
the poor people of this country, they see these behaviors. They know that definitely we don't care. So how come suddenly you care now? In mm. We cannot choose when to be consistent. That's why I tell people that many people don't even know Fela's songs. Fela they fight government. Fela, Fela never fought the government of this country. Mm. Fela waged class war on behalf of the poor of this country. Mm. If you go and listen to many of his songs, not the popular ones, they want you to know by force, like Palava, like, uh, even in Palava, you can hear the story. Landlord, the rich man, he call me tenant, the poor man, say, give me your rent. Mm. The tenant, Palava, he define, he could eat versus mushi, uh, he could eat blindness, rare room, all, most of his song was him talking mm. to the professionals of Nigeria on behalf of the poor. That this fake life can't take you anywhere. Join the people and let's remove this, this evil in our country. And which is still basically the solution to what is happening in Nigeria today. That we that we've been able to achieve a little bit of comfort and education within this oppressive system have refused to use our resources to build bridges to our people to mm. open their eyes, to educate them, to organize with them. And that is the key word here. Yeah. To organize with them. Instead, we want to always, you know, use our power to siphon their energy to their oppressor. Mm. Use our power to siphon their energy to the oppressor. And they too, they are tired of it. Mm. They are tired of it. So we must decide. Truly, the fate of Nigeria lies today in the hands of those of us that have the power to mobilize with our people. To do it genuinely. Because trust me, all this that's happening will come to an end one way or the other. Yeah. Whether it comes to an end in a way that there's no bloodshed, that we can protect the little gains that we've had, yeah. or we become like this crazy country, like all these countries where just war everywhere, every time, nobody, no government, you know, like they do in Somalia, no anything. It's also, it's also going to happen. And at that moment, when people are chasing down anybody with car, anybody with shop, let me be government. But they will ask you, when my child was dying, did you strike? Mm. No. Okay, strike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is what I'm trying to avoid. I don't want mob action to liberate Nigeria from these oppressors. No. They will run away. Nobody wants that. So the only way for us to make sure that doesn't happen is for us to organize with our people. Mm. You know, educate them, make them see the lights. You know, not use rhetoric. They learn from us, we learn from them. Like me, I always say to people, I can complain all day that Molo is bad. Mm. Nigeria shouldn't be riding in Molo. Mm. But I've never entered Molo in my life. Mm. I must take education from those that enter. Because mm. they really know what they have with it. Me, I just know, say, it's bad. Mm. But those with the enter language really tell me yes. how bad. Yeah, yes, you can't really understand is. the pain unless you're wearing the shoes. You know, yeah. so this is what we must do. We must find a way to help our people get to power. You know, this is not building organizations because mm -hmm. she wants to be president or because or because Yabo wants to be governor. Okay. <laughs> no, but because truly we, we believe in the power yeah. of our community. That there are people in our community that are intelligent enough, but just because they are not one of these people. Mm -hmm. You know, and that is how fascism is. That's how the whole world is fascist. Is everybody in all the world is ruled by rich people. The people that are liberating themselves from rich people now are the South Americans. Mm. They've woken up to this fact. So if you look at Bolivia, uh, uh, Venezuela, that's why they're giving all of them bad name now suddenly. Mm. Um, uh, Peru, uh, Colombia, they are voting for teachers and bus drivers as president, mm. chasing all these rich people out of their country's business. Because mm. they understand now that these people are one globally, mm. sharing the world's uh, resources, to their own benefit only. benefit only. Okay, guys, it was an amazing time, and I learned a lot from my darling brother, Shun Kuti. It's always a pleasure. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> so I know you're married. I know you have a beautiful daughter. I know your music album is coming out sometime soon. Yeah, next yeah, yeah. Year. Everybody, please support my album. Please do when it comes out. When it out. comes out, don't do any app. Does it have a name now? Yes, yeah, 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 but I can't say, but I've named the album and okay. the title is excellent. Excellent. Oh, I wish I could tell you guys, you guys would be so jealous. All right, let me know about but, it. But, you know, if you don't support people like us that are trying to do better for the world, yeah. I'll go and collect money from politicians. <laughs> uh, I've told you, this is the last chance. People have to give me money from your pocket. Okay. Or I'll go and collect it somewhere else. But definitely, guys, we have to support, support, support when the music comes out, the album comes out. 
I'm sure it's going to be mind blowing, and we're going to learn from it. We have Lenny Kravitz producing, so yes, that's good. That would be nice. Once it's out, let me know so I can also put it on my platform. Oh, you always support and me, so yeah, so we you know can my sis. we can promote it. My regards to your wife, your daughter, and everybody. Yeah, and keep killing it on your show. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Hot pepper. <laughs> your wala is too much. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Coming from you, then it's confirmed. <laughs> See wahala, calling me wahala. Uh, <laughs> yes. Okay, guys. So on this show, we do what we call a switch. I okay. almost forgot that. Ah, ah, it's like your juju want to cash me. Mama yeah. saw me. <laughs> I'm not surprised. So you get to be the host, the presenter, and you get mm -hmm. to ask me just one question. One one question. <laughs> one question. All right. Uh, okay, that one is simple. That one is simple. Okay, let me just drink to that. Drink bit. coffee first because <laughs> they're about to spill some tea. Me, <laughs> <sighs> mm. I'm going to do my intro. Okay. So, hello, everybody. This is Shewani Kabukuti. I know this is my show, The Golden Room, on YouTube. Yeah. And today I'm hosting the delectable. Yabba Ojo. <laughs> a round of applause, everybody at home. A round of applause. Hey. So my question for you is very simple. Okay. Out of all your co-actors co and actresses on uh, Real Housewives, who do you want to beat? Like, they just give you, they just need to, you look at you, you can't ask, but you just want to take, just give you five minutes with this person. This time one corner, just want five minutes. Who do you want five minutes with? Don't let me say it out now. No, if I say it out, out now, who then, do you want five minutes? Don't like it because it actually did happen. It did happen. You got five minutes with somebody. I almost got. They gave me one second. It wasn't enough. <laughs> <laughs> they gave me one second. It wasn't enough. So they let me spill it down. But they'll get okay. to see. They'll get to watch okay. it. So that means there's if somebody that. There was someone, yeah, you but, need five minutes but unfortunately I couldn't because uh, you know she was. It's because uh, I'm not the producer of that show. Eh? If I was the producer, no, I'll actually, give you your five I, minutes. I couldn't. <laughs> there, there's a reason why I couldn't. Why I wish we had that one second <laughs> to do bass bros. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. So that is it for this episode yeah. of Golden Room. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you tried. <laughs> I'll score you. Uh, okay, seven over ten. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't I don't pass. See, even when I was in school, my teacher, my teacher said, she will apply yourself. If you apply yourself, you can be the best student in this school. I believe like, who told this guy I want to be the best student? <laughs> this was it. I personally, it's true. I don't believe in this competition that humanity is crazy about. Just right. Mm -hmm. How can we even build when we are all competing with each other? Yeah. Competing is the wrong energy that should exist especially within brothers in a nation. Yeah. You know, we should, we should be complementary, not competitive, Competition. you know. And this like whole system, world, that, that's why there's no love. Mm. That's like two musicians sit down here now. Everybody, my guy, my guy, I love you, I love you. But you, you understand that you why are, can't you love you are both competing. Mm. But you must compete. You both, there's only one space for number one. I know. All these numbers they put, oh, the number one, the number two song, number three song. Yeah. So that means... They create these powers that be create the hierarchy. You must yeah, compete for compare. whether you want to or not. And when you fall short, mm. even though it's your guy that is doing well, you can't tell me say your belly switch you finish. Now you lose. <laughs> now. <laughs> now you just lose. So the society. I don't, I don't, itself, I don't know how I can always get my head around that thing. No, you get over it. No, you get over it. I don't even believe in competition. Why would I mean? I feel it's but very society encourages it because it needs that to toxic and to make stressful. us feel like yeah. Mm, you're better than me, I'm better than you. It just reduces trust. Yeah. Because when that there's that gap in trust, mm. solidarity is hard to build. Mm. And the people need solidarity for liberation. You know, well, that's why there's a lot of pressure. Everything fits When into, you start competing, then you put your hands in so many things, then, then the pressure becomes so much because exactly. you have to live up to a particular standard to com continue your competition. <laughs> everything fits the system. You know? Continually fits uh -uh. the system. That's what they want. You know, the perpetual yeah. existence of this oppressive system. You know, that we are the ones now I holding it up. By ourselves, <laughs> while it is the way it is killing us. All. I swear. I say, you know, I, my family they always borrow money mm. to pay in picking school fees. Now, I don't mind. Mm. Trust me, I don't mind. Mm. It's for your child who cares about pride. Mm. I'll rub myself in sheets. Mm. Oh, sorry, in feces. Mm. But you're only doing this because you know, as if there are not better schools that you can afford, mm. but because your child must go to that school, because certain mm -hmm. people's children go to that, that school, school too. Mm, that's pressure. <laughs> you know? That's so, pressure. Man, I, I just feel like society and all these hierarchy, all these numbers they put in front of, mm. you know, keeping us constantly competing, it, it makes things, makes 
trusting and loving very difficult. Very difficult. You're right. You're, you're very right. It's something I do not understand why people do it. And well, it's a choice. If you want to compete, you compare. I remembered when I first bought my house and I told, and I came out and said, oh, I did mortgage. A lot of people were angry about it. But I'm like, why do I have to pretend? I mean, I did mortgage. Ah. <laughs> I bet they, no, they, they do. Let me know. I I'll, know I'll do your, mortgage too. Of course they do. I'll tell <laughs> you. Yeah, what's, that, what's that? Actually, what's that? I, I mean, in the foreign land where you guys all look up to all of them, most of them, their houses are on mortgage. You know, Not even most, their, everybody. Yes, even their cars are on they, 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 uh, HP. Yes. And the best system. I use the car two, three, the latest one come out, I return it. You take that yeah, money that I've been paying for that one. Yes. Put it on the new one. Yes. And I'll continue pay. Oh, come you on. You know, so. By the time I finish paying for that one car, I've yes. used the three, four latest ones. Yes. You have to be thick. But Nigerian elites will never give you such an option. Oh, I'm going Benny. You got the money at once. No, no story. Custom duty. Now, the, our own country, everything is just hard. Plane ticket from Ghana to London. Is at least a thousand cheaper, mm. uh, half, half sorry cheaper. Being in Republic to Paris, mm. you see tickets six hundred euro, yeah, five hundred euro. Nigeria is thirty minutes from mm -hmm. Benin Republic. Yeah, same ticket to France, mm -hmm. two thousand. Mm -hmm. Look at what they charging the two thousand for airport tax. This one yeah, cost that one. Yeah, our yeah. government want to kill. Let the poor breathe. breathe. <laughs> we need to breathe. Let the poor breathe. Ah. These people want to tango taste cement, most expensive cement in the world. In the country where we are earning the least salary in the world. What have we done to these people? What have we done? That's why a lot of people are I, going through mental health right now. Listen, this, I don't the know The depression is real. On. Why are you happy? Just... The mental health is real. Depression is real. Like, people are frustrated. I always tell people, like, but to understand who these people are is to really understand yourself. Look at your situation. I don't know why Nigerians like to look at that situation. If we look at our situation, we will understand the things we need to do. We will know the truth is staring us in the face. We have more doctors today mm. in Nigeria than we did in 1960. But we have less healthcare in Nigeria today uh. than we did in 1960. The more... Police, we have the less security. Almost all our doctors save the jackpot. The more lawyers and doctor, <laughs> uh, lawyers and judge, the less justice. Mm. The more schools we build, the less education. Mm. The more teachers and lecturers, the less knowledge. Mm. The more church and mosque, the less morality. The, so what's going go, what what are the, what are these institutions supposed to represent? Because hmm. the more of them we get, the less of those things. The more banks we build, the more poverty increase. What is going on? Where is the connect between the people and their institutions? Who are the people running these institutions that are continually producing negative uh, output for the people, whereas their own life is completely positive? If we continue on this topic, we will not end it. <laughs> no, but we must answer those questions. Ah. Nigerians must answer those questions honestly. Because when if they can answer those questions honestly, they will stop deceiving themselves and know the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. But because we want to deceive ourselves, we want to believe that one day my, my helper will come. Mm -hmm. Everybody is waiting for their helper. Mm -hmm. And this helper is just one of these same people destroying this country. Oh. Favor me and my family. Destroying this country. Oh. <laughs> but one day your own contract will show mm -hmm. that you too. But these things also don't last. Even up the way, all the way to the richest of us. Mm -hmm. I say to people all the time, how many of Abiola's companies are functioning today? Mm -hmm. Abiola was the richest man in Africa when he was alive. Mm -hmm. How many of his children are moving like children of the richest man? Mm -hmm. Many of these things don't even last one generation. Mm -hmm. Where's the generational wealth in Africa? Where are the descendants of Jaja Opobo? Jaja of Opobo. Mm -hmm. He was the richest man in Africa at that time too. Yeah. Where are the children of Mansa Musa that they talk about? The richest man that ever lived, Mansa Musa. Where are his children and how much do they have today? Where's all that wealth that we talk about? That's how all the because people have. Because we don't have a system it, the that money works. doesn't even so, exist. Now wash. My sister, now wash. Mm. It's Nigeria's money everybody is sharing for themselves and pretending like they're making money. Mm. It's Nigeria's money. It's our money. It's the money that our children are supposed to used to become human beings in this world, to become anything they want to be. Mm. Money that should, that should be used for all the programs that makes a nation viable. Mm. But instead of using it to chase girls, go to Dubai, 
buy apartment for baby in Miami that will put your nyash on, on Instagram. <laughs> She will permit to read It's true. Did it happen? You want me to say the person's name? I beg go. Oh my. After you come God. and sell us the most expensive cement, <laughs> where don't where don't enjoy your enjoy your life finish for Miami. <laughs> me that kind of small girl they talk for internet say in a year she opened two restaurants <laughs> of two million dollar. So she know what it means. Hey, I see, see my life. Look at my body in Miami. Hey, what do mean shame Miami? The girl will even fine. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. So, oh God. these are the questions we must ask ourselves. I know. Are we going to continue queuing up behind these people? You know? That constantly misbehave like this and ruin our opportunity at anything great? But the problem, the question for me is, how many people do want this change, actually? No, because no, no, no. Because a lot of people say they want this change, they want this change. How many people are even ready to get up to say, okay, let us even implement this change? You the, know? The issue is, I believe that majority of Nigerians truly want things to be different. Mm. But as I said, you know, we lack the solidarity, the understanding. And those of us that might be able to help are not interested enough. I think it's a class thing. Mm -hmm. The working, the employed professionals of Nigeria and their paymasters don't want anything to change and they have most of the voice and visibility. Mm -hmm. You know, as much as we love the internet, only about 40 million Nigerians are online. Yeah. And we are 200 million. Yeah. That means the majority of Nigerians are not even online. Mm -hmm. They are silence cut off from all these conversations that we are having. Yeah, because they're not they're, they're not either informed, educated, or even have the money to buy a phone. Exactly. So we that we do, mm. we we neglect them. Mm. We don't inform them. We don't cause, but th that one forty two million fifty. That's the number that will change this country. Mm. Not these six, six million votes among the forty million of us online. Mm. We someone don't share a vote, ten million, eight million, eight million. That's what twenty six million, some ten million of so election don't finish. Whereas the main voice of the country is exclusive, silence cannot even afford to participate in our discussions. You know, we make everything so elitist in Nigeria. Yeah, but I also feel there's no love among us, you know. I feel there's no love. Like, tribalism has really eaten deep into our, you know, there's so many things yes, that is so wrong. Because we don't feel Africa is enough. As I said, in, you know, tribalism, as people say, you know, I was talking about, People don't have any money. Like, all this money is our Nigerian money mm. that is being spent all over the place. Mm. You know? Sorry. Do no. British people no. do British people love themselves? Does the Scots love the English? Do the Scots love the English? Mm. Do the Irish love the English? Do the English love the Welsh? Mm. How many civil wars have they fought among themselves? Mm. Countless. Yeah. Three years ago, the Scots still had a referendum to leave Britain. Is that an act of people that love themselves? Mm. The French, do they love themselves? Have you been to France to see what the people of Brittany think of the people of Paris? And how the Basque region, and what do they call these uh, people in... Uh, ah, it's the Basque region, I mean, no, that's Italy. Uh, that's Spain. What do they call this other place? In, ah, is it that they, they almost want an autonomous region for themselves. Monaco is autonomous. They don't like all those rich people there. Listen, if you mix with Europeans, look at what's going on in Ukraine and Russia. Mm. These are the same people. There's nowhere in the world that there's this brotherly love we're talking about. Mm. It's a myth. People are only united for their national interest mm. because they love their country or their continent enough mm. to you put up aside all these petty differences mm. and walk towards the greatness of our common goal. But we've been programmed not to love Africa and Africans enough to make that decision. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ibuma, I, was, I agree, forget about Nigeria matter now we discuss, so let's make this happen. Make yes, me, let's make it happen. Uh, no, we don't love our, we don't love our continent enough. It's not ourselves we don't love. It's because the continent. I see Nigerians, uh, Yoruba Marina Usa, Ibo Marina Usa, Usa is in your house, you employ. Go to places they don't love themselves really. They don't employ you if you are from a certain tribe. Mm. I mean, go to countries that are truly divided along. Those kind of lines. They no go give you. Go to India, where there's a caste system. See what's going on there. You know they don't mix. There's really Hindu to Hindu, Muslim to Muslim. Mm. 
nobody will, no Muslim man will employ Hindu. You want you Hindu, you Indian Hindu. But we, we, we you are outside. Everybody's house has one Osama and his family in front. You know, I hate people. I hate people. Every day you are doing business with Igbo. You, all your girlfriends are Igbo. Hey, come on. These are rhetoric that we spew because we are bored. I think we are bored. We just want to say something. We are talking about national interest. There's no hegemony amongst any people. I will not be the one to say to Africans that you must love yourself before you, you must be perfect before you are human. Imperfection is part of humanity. I've not seen any perfect human being or any perfect group of human beings. It is only Africans that they always, they like when they shoot us in America, they're not going to bring out somebody's uh, criminal record as if it justifies the unjust killing of the person on the street. Is resisting arrest a death sentence? You have killed me, you are talking the thing, I'm a criminal. What has that got to do with anything? So it's only, it's only people that are not criminals that deserve justice, that deserve human rights. It's only we Africans that are given that criteria to be perfect before we are humans. Mm. Whereas imperfection is humanity. humanity. Yeah. So we cannot demand impossible things from ourselves. Anybody can go and do your whatever, tribal, whatever. Imperfection is humanity. But True. when we are talking national interest, we must love our nation, nation and our continent, you know, but we've been taught, say, do Muslims love themselves? Look at how divided the Arab world is. But when you want to talk about their Arab business, their Muslim Islam, they, they everybody unites immediately. Yeah, they don't joke. Why can't we find that love for Africa? Because we've been educated to hate Africa. We've been indoctrinated in our schools to think Africa is evil, Africa is savage, anything in Africa is brutal and mean and backward and dark. Mm. And black. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's true, you know, okay. in our minds. I know. So we must rise above that. Yeah, Love yourself, your continent. You can do your petty tribalism shit. It doesn't mean anything. Mm. If tribalism held anybody back, then there will be no must way be able to the love tribes our of Europe continent enough yeah. to want to change. There's no way the tribes of Europe can develop the way they've developed. Nobody, I see Europe fought perpetual war for 500 years. Hmm. They didn't stop fighting till they found Africa. They united because of Africa. Go and read. You know they say Berlin Conference. That's not the full name. It was the Berlin War Conference, hmm. where they called themselves to war against Africa. Africa didn't know that they, so people were planning war against them. Europeans saw Africa and they united immediately to exploit Africa. These people were fight, they were at war. The Germans were fighting the Brit, uh, the uh, Austrians. The Austrians were fighting the the Ottomans. The French were fighting the English. The Spanish were fighting the Italians. There was five hundred years perpetual war. The Spanish and the British, the Spanish and the Italian, continuous until they called Berlin. Say, wait, wait. See, see, look at money. Look at mm. money. Mm. Are we going to continue fighting? Mm. Instead of us to unite and face this money, money. <laughs> they say, well, let's face this money. Sure. We brought peace to them with our blood. And we cannot unite for ourselves to find the same peace for our own selves. Mm. It's ridiculous. It's completely ridiculous. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this. I know you're going to enjoy this episode, definitely, because I know you can have Shionkuti <laughs> and not learn one or two things. Yeah, yeah, but that is bringing this. I part. know. Ah, you read a lot, you know. It's good. Because it concerns me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for staying in tune. Thank you so much for being part of the show. Like I say, make sure you like, subscribe, click. Hmm? Notification. Don't Everything. Forget. Don't forget. Follow Yabojo TV. Subscribe and always stay tuned to watch our beautiful episodes. So from me and from Sheon, we say, Ah, whatever. <laughs>